Now, your Storm Team 2 forecast first. Sponsored by South Carolina Solar. Certainly a nice way to begin the month of November, November that is. Look at these temperatures right now. We're 70 in Monk's Corner, 70 in Walterboro. Upper 60s on Folly, low 70s heading out towards Sullivan's Island. And as we look at low temperatures by morning time, low 60s for Edisto. Somerville at 57 under a partly cloudy sky. Not as chilly as it has been the last few mornings. 55 King Street, 55 in Walterboro. We'll talk about the rest of the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. News 2 at 6 starts right now. Live with coverage you can count on. This is News 2 at 6. A new method of transportation could soon be on the way for people here in Mount Pleasant. What the town is proposing along a popular area in the low country. A millage property tax increase in Goose Creek will have people paying more. We will tell you what led to this hike and we'll also hear from the city's mayor. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Murray. And I'm Brendan Clark. The Charleston History Commission wants to add a plaque to the John C. Calhoun statue, which is downtown in Marion Square. The statue has been the center of controversy, some calling for its removal, saying it symbolizes hatred, racism, and division. The commission wants to engrave the following words on the plaque. Now, this statue to John C. Calhoun is a relic of the crime against humanity, the folly of some political leaders, and the plaque of racism. It remains standing today as a grave reminder that many South Carolinians once viewed Calhoun as worthy of memorialization, even though his political career was defined by his support of race-based slavery. Historic preservation to which Charleston is dedicated includes this monument as a lesson to future generations. That's a story we are following very closely. News 2's Sophia Arizosa is live downtown. Sophia, they are expected to vote on this issue. That's exactly right, Brendan and Carolyn. They still haven't voted. Once they do, this text will then have to be approved by city council. Right now, they are working on revisions, which they've been working for for several hours. The big point of controversy tonight is that line that reads crimes against humanity. Some saying that term is too closely associated with the aftermath of the Second World War. One man said he wasn't offended by the information in today's text, but rather the tone. Another said this is exactly what that monument needed. Earlier today, I spoke to people all said they were OK or in favor for adding a plaque to the monument, but said the verbiage isn't perfect. You're going to have to get a lot of people saying, yes, we want this done. I think we have to look, let the historians make their, their historical judgment of the truth and then, and, then, and then challenge that in the public square and get people's opinion. You can't just put it on paper and say this is what we're going to do. The History Commission first started drafting this about a month ago following a charge from the mayor. We'll have more on this on News 2 at 10 and 11. Reporting live in downtown Charleston, Sophia Rizzoza, Count on 2. An update to a story we brought you yesterday. The Berkeley County Coroner has identified a man shot and killed in Sangaree. The death of 41-year-old Stephen Hutchins has been ruled a homicide. Authorities responded to a house on Beauregard Road Tuesday morning. Police say that several people were detained as a result of that shooting. They also say officers have responded to the house 15 times so far this year. A couple were vehicle calls, one car theft, but most were drug related. The man wanted in connection in a murder case is now in custody. 23 year old Tyree Steed was arrested by U.S. Marshals this morning. Police say Steed is connected to the murder of Adrian Haley at Waters Edge Apartments last month. He will have a bond hearing in the morning in Somerville. Police in Hanahan are searching for a suspect in connection to an attempted murder. On Tuesday, police were called to a house on Malvern Lane for reports of a shots fired, they found a man shot in the head. Police say the victim identified the man who shot him as Jack Rogers III. Police have issued a warrant for Rogers' arrest. We've got vandalism on Spring Street. Several homes and businesses spray painted in red and black lettering like the stuff you see behind me here. Police are looking for who's behind it. And News 2's Libba Holland has more. You might see something like this on the side of businesses, even homes here along Spring Street, but they're not all symbols. Take a look at this. Some have words, eat the rich, kill capitalism. 
So we have the Eat the Rich right here, Workers Unite. Over the past few weeks, Joe Archer's workplace has become more like a billboard. It's been probably like week increments where it's been happening. Not just this side of the building, but the other side too. And about today or yesterday, uh, that anarchy sign uh, appeared there on this wall here. Other homes and businesses also under the graffiti attack. A Charleston police report documents graffiti at four other Spring Street locations. Police say no suspects yet. We think it is interesting. It's it's mostly just on Spring Street that we've noticed. Um, we're not sure the motives. I think it's just someone not particularly mad at us or our business, but maybe just a general Charleston business thing. It's just a good wall to have a message. Which is why he hasn't washed the graffiti away. We feel like if we wash it, then they might just come back and redo it. Crews with Charleston's Livability and Tourism Department are working to remove the markings on the public buildings in the city, but they need permission for private ones. If this happens to you, there is a specific number that you should call. It's right there on your screen, or you can find it on countonto.com. In downtown Charleston, Libba Holling, Count On Two. Across South Carolina, federal authorities have arrested a man accused of sending death threats to U.S. Senator Tim Scott. According to the state newspaper, Jason Kenneth Bell called Scott's Washington's office threatening to kill him. The court documents show Bell did not like Scott's criticism of President Trump's statements after the deadly rally in Charlottesville. Bell claims to idolize convicted Charleston church shooter Dylan Roof and has been making threats to lawmakers for at least six years. That's a controversy on the campus of Clemson University. Police trying to figure out who put out flyers trying to recruit students for the alt-right movement, a group which is in favor of white nationalism. The flyers which were found on campus Monday were removed because they broke the school's policy, not because of their message. Students say the flyers do not reflect the university's values and they want action taken now. I think it's disgusting. I think that that is not, definitely not reflective of the Clemson campus or the Clemson student body as a whole. The issue with the flyer that took place Monday was that it did not have an approval stamp um, per our regulation. And police say they are looking into who exactly posted those flyers. An update right now concerning that failed nuclear power plant project. South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson wants a judge to appoint an official to oversee money collected by Santee Cooper and South Carolina Electric and Gas. This includes a $2 billion settlement by the reactor's builder, Westinghouse and Toshiba. Wilson filed a motion today requesting the official protect taxpayers. Happening now, a meeting to give the public a better look at what's happening to transportation routes in the Shem Creek area. News 2's Margaret Chadbourne explains how the town is trying to make it easier and safer for cyclists and pedestrians. Coming soon, protected lanes for bikers here along parks in Mount Pleasant. The town's transportation department applied for state funding and wants to use those dollars for the Shem Creek Bridge bike lane project. Just build it and the people will ride it. Dan Kelly says it's not always easy getting around Mount Pleasant by bike. I worry about cars not paying attention and not having enough space. He went five years living carless, only using two wheels to get anywhere. But I would take a different route to and from uh, based on, you know, safety. Eventually, his family insisted he get a car because they were so worried about his safety. I rode 18 miles and eventually I stopped riding the full distance. Kelly says Mount Pleasant, especially near Shem Creek, where the bike path ends, is an area that is hard to get around no matter what. No, I don't want to see bike lane end signs. I want them to continue to get more people using it when it goes from point A to point B without interruption. Now the town of Mount Pleasant is moving ahead and using state funds to create bike lanes and walkways near Shem Creek Bridge on Coleman Boulevard. Mount Pleasant will use $600,000 alone for the bike lanes. The project is the center of a meeting taking place this evening at Town Hall. Construction will begin in December of 2018. In Mount Pleasant, Margaret Chadbourne, Count on Two. If you need health insurance today marks the start of open enrollment under the Affordable Health Care Act. To qualify, you have to be a citizen living in the United States and cannot already be on Medicare. You have to enroll by December 15th to receive coverage, which would start in 2018. If you would like to find out more about the plans that are available, you can find that information by going to healthcare.gov. 
Goose Creek taxpayers will have to pay a little bit more for their tax bill. Yes, they will. Mayor Michael Heitzler says a state government mandate caused them to hike rates because state retirement fund investments did not return enough money to pay retirees. News News' Raymond Owens joins us from Goose Creek with more. Goose Creek City Council approved the tax increase about a month ago, and it equates to about a 10% rate hike. Our city was founded in 1961 with a 40 mil tax. What do you think our tax is today? It was 40 mils, was that almost 50 years ago? It's 45 mils now. However, Mayor Heitzler says action in Columbia is forcing about a five mil tax hike. They're demanding half a million dollars. They sent us a letter uh, six months ago and said, by the way, City of Goose Creek, you and the counties and the cities in this, you got to send us money based on how many employees you have in the state retirement program. You guys have X number of employees, therefore send us a half a million dollars. We didn't know we were going to need it. We haven't had a chance to plan for it. We're going to have to raise the millage about five mils. You'll see this increase in your most recent tax bill. In Goose Creek, I'm Raymond Owens. Count on two. Two Charleston business leaders have pledged $500,000 to the International African American Museum. Sean Jenkins and Mason Holland of Benefit Focus. New donation will go toward the development of the museum. It will be built in downtown Charleston at Gadsden's Wharf, and it's slated to open sometime in 2020. Coming up on News 2 at 6. A new store coming to Somerville looking for local vendors. Coming up, we speak with staff at Lowe's Food about their goals for this anticipated store. 